If you're the type of player who wants the ultimate convenience in Guild Wars 2, then you should keep watching this video. But before we begin with the actual list of best items to buy in the gem store, I want to mention that if you don't have Secrets of the Obscure unlocked for your account, then you should get Living World Season 4, even if you are not a story type of person. This Living World Season will allow you to unlock the Sky Scale and make your life much easier. However, if you enjoy playing games for the story, then I would recommend buying all Living World Seasons and enjoying those first before shooting for the convenience items from the gem store. I am also going to mention the list of items from best to worst in terms of convenience and value, and by the end of the video, I'll mention a few things that are basically traps and should be avoided. Also, if you are not in a rush, try waiting for those items to go on sale as you can save around 20 to 30% because some of them tend to go on discounts quite a few times. All right, starting off with number one, we have the Copper Fed Salvage Matic. This item will let you salvage as much gear as you want for three copper a pop, which is a cheaper price than the basic salvage kit. It has an unlimited number of uses, and I really think that everyone should own one of those as it can save you a lot of time and save you that trip to buy basic salvage kits whenever you need them. If you enjoy playing on multiple characters, then the Copper Fed is a perfect combination with shared inventory slots. This is an item that I will talk about later down in the video. Now a copper fed costs 800 gems and can sometimes go on discounts, so keep an eye out for that. Number two, just like the copper fed, you have a silver fed salvage matic, which costs less gems and is used for salvaging rares. Now you can always craft 250 mystic salvage kit for cheap, but if you run out of mystic forge stones, then what are you gonna do? This is where the silver fed comes in place. When it comes to using the salvage kits, I have a video where I describe what kind of kit you should use on each gear. You can check this out by clicking the link in the description. I also know that there is a runecrafter salvage matic, but this doesn't make a huge difference in comparison to the copper fed, so go with either or. Infinite mining tools are extremely helpful as you will not buy a single sickle, mining pick, or logging tool anymore. The only downside about the infinite gathering tools is that they're not shared between all your characters. You can, however, always store them in the shared inventory slots and swap them out whenever you change an alt, but this is more of an inconvenience rather than a convenience at this point. It's also good to know that some infinite gathering tools are better than others. For example, the watchwork mining pick has a 33% chance to give you watchwork sprockets, and there are a bunch of others like this, so keep an eye out for those. Individual gathering tools will cost you 1000 gems apiece, but you can also get all three of them as a package for 2400 or 2700 gems depending on the tools. Now when it comes to passkeys, there's the Thousand Seas Pavilion passkey and the Mistlock Sanctuary passkey. Both of them are superior compared to other passkeys. But I personally prefer to go with a Thousand Seas one as you can literally port to almost any fishing spot in Tyria, Cantha, and the Crystal Desert. You can even go back to where you were before using the passkey. You will also have access to many crafting stations, bank, trading post, guild bank, jade bot workbench, and many other merchants. This is a passkey that can actually save you some gold in the long run and provide the ultimate convenience. You will most likely not need to go to any other city anymore at this point. If you like playing with other classes or having alts, then you should get a couple of character slot expansions. Even if you don't want any alts, then you should still consider getting character slot expansions. Because if you get one and you create a character and you slap 18 or 20 slot bags in that character, then they will turn into a storage that you can use to keep your items in. Now if you are using your character slots as a bank storage, then you would be getting the most value for inventory slots to gem ratio compared to other items in the gem store. The only drawback is that you will have to swap to the character and then take out the items and then log back into the other character to use them. This is a bit inconvenient, but this is where the bank tab expansion comes into play. This item costs 600 gems and can give you 30 slots in your actual storage. This allows you to use the items in the storage from any character without having to switch to it. So this is where value over convenience comes into play and you can be the decision maker on this one. Do you wanna go for value for less convenience or more convenience for less value? I'll leave it to you guys. Now for all my fellow alt jumpers out there, you need to get yourself shared inventory slots. You can buy them at the gem store for 700 gems a pop, and this price decreases as you buy more of them in a package for a maximum of five. 
I would recommend getting those five as they are useful to place things that can be used across all your alts. For example, I personally use the copper and silver fetch salvage kits, and since I do a lot of fractals on different characters, I have my infinite omni potion. I also like to keep the thousand seas pass key, which is nice. I would also like to remind you that this item goes on discounts quite often, and if you get an expansion, you will get a level 80 character booster, along with a shared inventory slot for free. Now I'm not sure if this is only applicable to the latest expansion or to whichever one you buy, so for anyone who is sure about that, please leave it down in the comments below. Alright, so if you spend most of your time on a single character, then getting bag slot expansions is a good choice because it will make opening unidentified gear and storing day-to-day -day items in your inventory much more convenient. Since getting a full set of 32 bag slots will cost more than a legendary set of armor, then getting 4 to 5 bag slot expansions and using 20 slot bags would be a cost efficient method and is enough to keep you going for a long time before you have to go back to the merchant and sell your items. Anyway, on to the next item. The storage expander costs 800 gems and allows you to add an additional 250 into a stack in the bank. So, for example, instead of being able to store only 250 mithril, a single storage expander will increase that number to 500. Luckily, you only have to buy one storage expander to increase the stack for every single material in your bank by 250. I personally purchased three of these, and I have a stack of 1000 for my bank, and I found that this is extremely convenient. Especially because I do Reba and CF so much, I end up with so much Bloodstone, Imperial Fragments, Dragonite Ore, Elderwood, Mithril, you name it. So this actually came in handy. When Halloween and Christmas are here, you should consider buying the Candy Corn Gobbler and the Snowflake Gobbler. These two items are extremely important if you want to farm gold, experience, and karma. The way they work is by sacrificing candy corn and snowflake, two items that you will get an abundance of if you participate in both festivals, you will get buffs that last for a short period of time and can be very handy when doing your farming sessions. Whether you have a legendary set or you have so many ascended items, if you prefer to play one class for different roles, then you need to get yourself an equipment template expansion or two. This item allows you to swap to different equipment on the fly, so this means you can go from your Staff Berserker to your Sword Focus Viper's Gear. However, if you play different classes for different roles, then having this would make less sense. The last item on this list, which will be a synergy to the Equipment Template Expansion, would be the Build Template Expansion. This allows you to have different build traits for the different equipment templates that you have. So again, in other words, you can swap from a Tempest to a Weaver build on the fly. Both items cost 500 and 300 gems respectively, which is not a bad price, but again, it's advisable to wait for discounts as these items also tend to be discounted from time to time. Now, just like there are things that you have to purchase to up your convenience game, there are things that you have to avoid because they are quite not worth your hard-earned money. These items are Account Bump, Two Week Passes, Bank Access Express, Banker Golem, Black Line Salvage Kits, Boosters, Instant Armor Reinforcing Canisters, Primers, Mystic Forge Stones, Revive Orbs, Trading Post Express, Transmutation Charges, and Upgrade Extractors. Avoid buying these items because as you play the game, you will be able to get most of them for free, and even if you do, 90% of the time you won't be in a situation where you need to use them, obviously with the exception of a few of them. Anyway, that's all I have for this video. I hope you learned something new. If you did, don't forget to subscribe. And if you didn't, don't forget to subscribe. And liking the video would also go a long way to motivating me to create more content like this for you guys. Okay, thank you so much for watching. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Uh, peace.